Hey guys, welcome back to our study, The Road Through Romans. In uh, today's episode, we're going to kind of stop for a little bit. Last week, we introduced Abraham as the father of faith, and we talked about him being the central figure of three different expressions of the world's largest religions. And what were those? Christianity, <laughs> Judaism, Islam. and Islam. <laughs> it is, okay. And there's that other one. Oh yeah, it's mine. It's mine. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> Well, uh, he, he plays a huge, huge role, and it is because he predates the law, so that means that it's before Judaism is even formed, so he becomes this, this character that helps us to symbolize what does it look like to have a pure relationship with God? What is the purest form, and what does it all boil down to in, in its most primitive element? It's faith. It's faith becomes that central thing. So we want to look at a little deeper on his journey of faith and what that meant. Now, here's what you need to understand. Uh, before this, I hope you've already read Romans 4, 17 through 25, so you should have done that in your group. If you didn't, pause. hit pause <laughs> and read that out loud. Pick somebody because this is going to be important as a backdrop. And uh, we're going to probably cover this, today's material, in two different sessions. So we'll, we'll find a good place to break and then we'll, uh, we'll just uh, carry on the very next session. So here's the fact. The fact is, faith, faith in fact, is the most vital element of your Christian journey, uh, and, and for several reasons. Let's go over a couple of these. First, because faith is the only way in which you can uh, please God, mm -hmm. and it's the only way you can establish a relationship with God. Hebrews 11:6 6 says this, without faith, it is impossible. <laughs> that means impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently or earnestly seek him. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, uh, God can only connect with humanity through this dimension of faith. It's the only way that we can connect with uh, the person of God and, and bring pleasure to God. It's the only way. That's the, it's the dimension of faith. And so that word uh, believe in the Greek there is the word pistuo. And so to be very clear uh, the distinctive between, it's not just that, because uh, you're going to hear a lot of people, a lot of people say stuff like, well, I believe in God, but that, that is a cognitive right. ascension. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a way of saying, you know, well, logically, I uh, ascribe to the facts about the possibility, but the word for faith in the New Testament is a word that denotes a relational attribute. It literally means to express a trust in. It literally, so in fact, uh, there was a missionary tribe translating uh, the Bible into a, another language, and as he was coming to the New Testament, he came across that word for the first time, believe, and faith, and uh, working with his translator, he said, you know, I'm trying to, trying to, you know, get this concept for belief, and, and uh, they, were coming, they were having problems coming up with it, and uh, finally, his translator that was helping him in the, in the target language uh, sat down in the chair and then leaned back, and he said, tell me the word you express when you say you're, you're leaning all the way into this thing. He said, oh, and he gave him a word, and he said, that's what he, and he <laughs> used that as the translated word for faith through the rest of his translation. It was to fully rely on completely placing the whole of my trust. So that's, that's very different than just saying, I believe some stuff about God or about Jesus. It is, it is a relational dimension. And because it's relationally uh, connected in a relational dimension, that's why we can say, and that's why the Bible says, you can't please God. You ever, you ever with your spouse just wonder what's the, what's the secret? You know, yeah. how can I get them Are you to just tell us that today? Because this got real interesting. Yeah, this, <laughs> all of a sudden we're like, <laughs> everybody teach us leaned in. One. <laughs> <laughs> what is the secret formula that if I could be absolutely sh assured that uh, I would, uh, I would please and make my spouse happy? Well, uh, with that one it will remain a mystery on earth. <laughs> With God, it's no mystery, he says, without faith. So, Gary, talk a, a little bit about number two here. So, uh, trying to live the Christian life by my by my reasoning is sin. Okay, so trying to live the Christian life by my own reasoning, by my own way of thinking about it, well, uh, that means I'm doing it in my own power. I'm doing it to the fullest extent that I can possibly understand it, but, man, that falls so short in Romans 14, 14, 23. It says, everything that does not come from faith is sin. 
Wow, so that's a little bit different uh, explanation of sin than what I'm used to hearing us talk about, right? It's so, a little complicated. Yeah, yeah. Because so, Paul, we're going to hit this later, and he's in Romans 14. Paul's literally talking about this dispute with some believers who are talking about what food you could eat or what you couldn't eat, and yeah. I can do this because I have rights, and you yeah. know, and, and it's this weird discussion. All of a sudden, it's almost like a it's almost like a side note because all of a sudden, in the middle of it, he just stops and says, "Look." Whatever's not of faith is just sin. Yeah. Yep. And this is actually an interesting dimension because Paul is Paul's trying to say, look, when you try to live the Christian life by your own thoughts of rules mm -hmm. and rituals and uh, what you ought to do versus what I ought to do, when you when you boil it down to that, he's saying that's just a sin because mm -hmm. the 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 Christian life is <coughs> meant to be lived by faith. Yep. We talk about, uh, it brings me back to my college days, back when I was doing, well, I'm, I'm doing youth ministry now, but back when I was doing youth ministry back in the 90s, we used to talk about, okay, well, worship is lifestyle. It's your, your life. Any, in fact, there's any, everything in your life you can do can be an act of worship unless it's a sin. Yeah. And, and that kind of ties into this idea of, okay, is this a, is, am I doing this in faith? Am I doing this as a response to who God is? Am I doing this as a way of because I'm grateful for who God is? Or am I doing this because I'm trying to follow a rule? Or am I doing this because I think I'm not good enough and might make me good enough? And the feelings associated with those motivations behind things, it changes your life. It changes yeah. the way you do everything. And so I, I, you know, if you're frustrated in your faith, there's a good chance you're trying to do it on your own. There's a good yeah. chance you're like, man, why is nothing working, you know? We did a series years ago, you made me think of it, that worship when we were trying to talk about what does worship look like. We yeah. used that acrostic, uh, worship, W-O-R-S-H-I-P. We said, well, worship is actually willingly offering reverence, service, honor, intimacy, and praise. So yeah. it, it is something you do every single yeah. day of your life. It's not just something you do when you sing a song. And then the, yeah. to, to touch those things together, back to point one, where it's the only way to please God, but then two, this frustration of when I try to do it on my own, yeah. and it doesn't work mm -hmm. out. You know, that just reminds me of myself. Uh, you know, growing up in the church, knowing all the right things, doing all the right things, praying all the right prayers, and then getting to college and being like, but why don't I see God showing up and doing, doing anything? Why is it just like, okay, he knows all the right things and he does the right stuff, but God's not doing anything phenomenal. And then we see yeah. uh, the, the verse, my life, verse Jeremiah 29, 13. You will seek me, and you'll find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And you realize, man, there's portions of my heart that I'm not giving over to faith, that I'm keeping for myself, and I'm trying to manage myself. And, uh, and because I wasn't living by faith in t with the entirety of who I was, I wasn't seeing God do those things. And I was trying to do things on my own reasoning. And so it, it leads to frustration. Well, what, you're ta what we're talking about in this session is, is hitting us right where we live because mm -hmm. we're going to look at, in just a few moments, the journey of Abraham because why was Abraham the father of faith? We're going to look at his journey out of Genesis and look at exactly, like you said, these these phases and dimensions of what when when your faith doesn't seem to be Do working, anything. Yeah, like, well, like, what's, what's happening the here? Point here? <laughs> and uh, we're going to walk through that yeah. uh, in great detail. So let's look at number three. So the third thing about faith is that it determines what God will do mm. in my life. Now, notice I didn't, I didn't write down what God can do, because I think we all know uh, God could do anything, but, but he will not violate the principle of faith. Mm. So yes, of course, God, how many of us, we pray in our prayers that we want God to do something that actually is overturning our faith? Oh God, <laughs> take these lustful thoughts from me, <laughs> right? right? I mean, we, we ask God to do for us what he's told us to do ourselves. Right. That's not faith. Faith isn't where you say, well, God, just make it happen. Mm -hmm. Faith, God, just make me a good husband. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like the and Holy Ghost it. is going to go, ding, you know, and all yeah. of a sudden you're a good guy. That's not how faith works. That's not the faith to mention. But faith will determine what God will do in my life according to, mm -hmm. the, to the principles of faith. Mm -hmm. So look at this verse with me. It says, uh, Jesus touched their eyes, and he said, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. So these guys came for a healing, mm -hmm. and Jesus, you know, says, like so many others, what do you want me to do? Well, we want you to heal. Well, oh, really? Why'd you come to me? Because you can do this. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they knew that Jesus was the source of the healing, and Jesus reciprocates by saying, 
according to that faith statement, because you believed, then you're going to receive. And so faith actually determines what God can do and how much God can do in your life. And you get to hold that yeah. key. It's, it's really, and it used to be confusing to me because I would read the stories in the Gospels and it would say things, and Jesus couldn't really do anything among mm. them because there was so little faith. faith. And I was like, wait, why is the yeah. all-powerful God of the universe suddenly constri I don't understand what's happening yeah. here. And then you have, on the, on the flip side of that, you have the, uh, the centurion who comes and says, oh, no, you don't need to go there. Yeah. I know what it means to <laughs> command people. You can stay here on the other side of the country and just tell them, and it'll be so. Yeah. And he's like, I haven't found faith like this anywhere. That's and crazy. It's In Israel, just like, yeah. wow. Yeah. So, but how do you balance that, though, between someone who's watching, you know, and there's probably many that are watching that says, man, Pastor Brian, I believe. I believe by faith. And uh, I'm praying, but, I, you know, God doesn't seem to be answering. And, and, like, even especially when it's, like, you know, prayers that you believe that yeah. God would honor. Like, like yeah, right. my child is sick. My dad is in the hospital with COVID. You know, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, because I think sometimes there's this other side where then, uh, you know, here's the problem. I think the, the tension that we wrestle with, either I didn't have enough faith or God yeah. isn't who he says he is. Yeah. And, and, but there's a third one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But what, I mean, so what is that? It, or is there a third one? I mean, is there a third possibility? I mean, what, 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 what are we left with to think on those scenarios? And that's, uh, you know, what you're tapping into is absolutely critical in the make or break of the dimension of walking by faith. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we're going to talk a little, we're going to talk a little bit about it when we look at the journey of uh, Abraham and what his journey of faith was. So let me give you kind of the, you know, the, you know. The Not too much. So that way they I'll come give you the back, epilogue. Give, I'll give yeah. you the little, you know, snapshot. <laughs> and the little snapshot is I cannot believe God for anything, for anything which God did not say. Mm -hmm. I cannot take God's word on anything that God didn't give his word for. And so what, what, what often happens in many people who are expressing, you know, uh, these faith statements is that they're asking God to do something that God didn't say he was going to do. Right. And so I can trust God 1,000% on anything that God has said that he is going to do. So it always begins with this sense of what did God say? And that's where we're going to get into Abraham when we talk about what was the promise mm -hmm. and why could Abraham take that to the furthest extreme, which we're going to look at, of believing that God, in fact, was going to do what exactly what God said He was going to do, and took that all the way to what we're what we would probably in modern Western times say was too far. You know, yeah. he, he just went too far with the whole thing. Well, it has to do with that principle of saying, "What can I believe God for?" Mm -hmm. And the answer is, I can believe God for the things that God has said He's going to do. I can trust that. Now, the beauty uh, that we have that Abraham did not is I have literally hundreds, if not thousands of things that God has already said mm -hmm. that I can actually trust God, believe God, and, and stand firm upon what God wants to do because he's already said he's going to do that. And then, so I'm going to dive a little bit yeah. deeper in that. So Hopefully that will keep, keep watching. Watching. Don't give up. Yeah. You know, don't give up. <laughs> uh, let's look at this number four. Uh, here's what uh, we do know is that God can accomplish the impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 17, uh, because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, then you could say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move because nothing then will be impossible for you. Uh, elsewhere, Jesus said, you know, with God, all things are possible. Remember when Jesus was talking about that, uh, that this is what you have to do to become a disciple. And they say, you know, they said to Jesus, you know, that, that's crazy talk, yeah. you know, that's impossible. And Jesus said, you know, well, it is impossible with man, but with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. So in other words, faith moves me into a dimension beyond the natural mm -hmm. and into the dimension of the supernatural which is interesting because the, the dimension of the supernatural is natural for God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's only removing me from the natural, you know, uh, carnal world into the dimension of the supernatural, which is God's natural domain. But it can accomplish, but, and that's why I put in uh, parentheses, uh, the impossible, because like that's, that word doesn't even exist in God's dictionary. You, yeah, know? Right, you have yeah. to look it up. Michael, what does that even mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, number five, the fifth thing about faith and why this is so important is that the Christian life is all about faith beginning 
to end. The whole uh, Christian life is about faith. Now, we read this in Romans 1.17. Paul, in his introduction, said, uh, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So from beginning to end, from first to last, it is all about faith. That's why I said this righteousness, this gospel, my message, Paul says, is all about faith from beginning to end. And so we want to look a little deeper as a case study of Abraham. And that's where uh, Paul introduces us in chapter 4 that he becomes that case study of someone that we can learn of what it means to actually walk by faith and especially uh, with a guy who didn't have an Old Testament or a New Testament. Mm -hmm. He only had his God, you know, and he had his faith, and we can learn a lot. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this.